Aloha, people of Earth. Welcome. My name is Mark. This is the Action Figuratorium. It's the studio that I'm in. It's where things go down. And today I'm going to be talking about the latest wave of Mythic Legions that the Four Horsemen have released. That is the uh, Necronomus wave. It is the... Um, it's the last of their four evil bad guys based on the four horsemen. So this is kind of, um, in my opinion, a bit of peak mythic legions. So uh, I think this is going to be particularly interesting to look at this, uh, this wave as it looks really, really good. So stick around, folks. <laughs> So I'm a real big fan of the fantasy genre. I grew up on it, it kind of shaped my life. Everything as I was a kid in the 80s was about fantasy. The movies, the games, the books, Dungeons and Dragons, action figures. Yeah, that's right. There was fantasy action figures in the 80s. And so um, as I got older and I discovered the Mythic Legions line, well, of course, I instantly fell in love. And my goal is to one day have absolutely all of them but until then until i actually achieve the ability to get all of them i think we're just going to go with get as many of the ones that you really love as you can and this latest wave that they are coming out with um, is particularly awesome looking and i think these guys the four horsemen toy company uh, located in new jersey I think they're really on kind of a high here. I think this is kind of like the most you can achieve in terms of the whole line within this wave and within these particular figures in terms of the um, uh, just the whole package, the sculpture and um, the accessories and everything that, that comes with them and uh, sort of the story that they tell. I think that this, this may be um, a, uh, a sort of... Um, I would say that this would be like a, a kind of forced all-in for everybody. I think if you're going to buy this wave, I think this is the one to get every single piece. Nothing here looks terrible. There are absolutely no lemons in this group. Usually in every wave, there's something in there where I'm like, nah, I don't really need a goblin or I don't really need, you know, this weirdo blue ogre guy or something. But this... This all looks particularly awesome. And so I'm going to go through and uh, just briefly, briefly mention each of the figures, what's kind of cool about it. And then we'll do a little bit of what I like to uh, say is the speculation as to um, what I think is going to be big in, in secondhand markets, what's going to be the, uh, the piece that, that will, later on future generations will be looking out for and trying to get their hands on. So these are... Um, all of the uh, the ones available in this wave. Um, this is uh, the store for pre-order. Pre-order is open from November 5th till about the 15th of January. Um, my goal is to try to get uh, enough money raised from getting rid of some toys that I currently have through, you know, the Ebays, etc. And I hope to get close to where I can go all in on this line. That is my goal, because everything here looks particularly juicy. So let's start at the top, right? Um, for those who don't know, the, um, the Mythic Legions is 10 factions, okay? There's four bad guy factions that are based upon the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So there's a war, there's a death, there's a, you know, there's a famine, there's a pestilence, that kind of thing. And then on the other side, there's four factions that oppose those factions. And they're going to be kind of the opposite. If one guy's were the death guys and these are the life guys, that kind of thing. You know how it works. So that's eight factions. And the other two factions is an evil faction of just random assassin bad guy dudes who, you know, just end up there. And the other good guy faction is just also a bunch of random pe people who've been kicked out of all the other factions end up in this faction. So that's the overarching idea behind the Mythic Legions. And this guy that we're looking at is the last of the four horsemen based 
uh, bad guys. Uh, he is the the, um, the death of the four horsemen. He's the skeleton guy. We've seen a lot of skeletons. I bought one. I bought a Morgolith. I was originally thinking, um, oh, this is, you know, because it was at one of their sales. And anytime you can get toys from their sales, they're always a lot cheaper than you're going to find on Big Bad Toy Store. Way cheaper than you're going to find on eBay. Not that prices are particularly crazy, to be honest. There's so many Mythic Legion figures out there now that you can actually um, track down quite a bit of them for uh, fairly inexpensive. I recently just got one from one of the most recent waves that dropped for, um, it was like the Elf Queen. I 50 bucks free shipping. That's not bad. That's, you know, only like about $13 more than it was for pre-order. Um, I think it was like 37 or so. And I think they're like 49 plus four bucks shipping on Big Bad Toy Store. So, um, you know, I think that, that is, uh, uh, I think that the prices are not as crazy as you think. However, if there's something specific you want and you're looking for it, you're probably going to end up paying uh, at least a hundred bucks down the road. So anytime you can get something cheap, you always do it. I picked up a Morgolith just because it was cheap. And I was like, well, I'll trade this or sell it. So I'm not. It's awesome. I'm keeping it. It's almost a centerpiece because I've got tons of other skeleton action figures, um, including those weirdo 90s skeleton warrior guys, in which we're going to look at a guy I think I think is based on one of them. And, um, you know, it, it's just so fantastic to have kind of a skeleton leader. And when you just bring her out with like the huge staff scepter and the giant crown thing, it looks amazing with all the skeletons around her. It looks really amazing. But this guy, holy shit, look at this. This is nuts. Um, it, of course, you've got the skeletal wings. Uh, I, I think these come with it. I think these are the same ones as the other skeletal wings you can get. I'm not sure about that. Don't quote of course, they've got the cape with the wire in it, so you can you can bend and move it and, and frame it and make it look like it's you know in the wind. Um, look at that headdress, and it's got this crazy gold paint, and it's got these gold bones hanging. This is a this is a wild figure. This is a pretty wild toy. There is um this is definitely like peak toy making from the Four Horsemen. I don't know how they're going to. Um, top this i don't they may not release any more mythic legions after this who knows this could be the end although they do have this video game based upon the characters coming out and this might kind of dovetail nicely into the release of that i didn't pre-order the game by the way but i i probably will uh subscribe and pick it up and play it for a bit if anything to check it out and run around and see what it's like you know i was always a big fan of fantasy mmos i played the world of warcraft for Say too long. All right, so this guy is Clutch. Um, here's another undead baddie in his league. Um, by the way, the uh, Necronominus, I think that's how you say it, I'm not sure. Um, he was $60. This figure is $50, and um, she comes with, of course, some kind of a, a skeleton of like a bird, some sort that sits on her arm. She's got a little cage in the back and then he's got this chimera skeleton. That's pretty cool. This is pretty wicked. And um, this uh, green skirt looks like a reuse from that, uh, that elven fairy queen just rotating around. It looks pretty cool. Let's move on. So we got this guy who's just basically a um, he was like a Grim Reaper pretty much in the line. And um, and I think this is kind of cool because a lot of people who maybe don't collect Mythic Legions figures, maybe don't collect fantasy figures, maybe they have, you know, Marvel Legends, stuff like that. This guy could kind of fit in with anybody. Six inch, he's a, he's a Grim Reaper, he looks cool. You can take all the, the stuff off if you want. You can, you can just go cloak if you need to. I think there's, it's um, got some pretty wild stuff on the back there. Uh, this dude, one six shooter who does the uh, photos. Um, this guy's got some some great glass. He's got a, a great cam, and uh, he really captures uh, the detail. I don't know um, what he's using or shooting with, but uh, he makes it look all real perfect. Uh, pretty good. 
So it looks like this guy's got a couple different head variants, one with the eyes filled in like he's some sort of blind or something and one without. So there's that. Then there's this guy. This is kind of what I think is loosely based with the extra arms on one of those skeletal warrior guys from the 90s. Um, this guy's particularly awesome looking. It really looks like bone. You know what I mean? Like look at that paint job. That's, uh, that's pretty badass. And this weirdo, I don't know what kind of animal that is. That skull, some kind of you know, herd animal of some sort. Of course, these weirdo, um, it's like Lord of the Rings orc swords, you know. There's the accessories. Very bitchin'. And then, of course, they've got a, uh, a builder, you know, like you're supposed to buy a lot of these guys so that you can make your army, and it's an army of undead. And it comes with a bunch of hands and heads and, you know, loads you up in accessories so you can make a bunch of different guys out of this. Uh, the, some transparent heads for ghost heads that kind of thing. And then we get to sort of the good guys. And so they've loaded us up um, with four knights. And there's this guy who's like got the Knight Templar. Then there's this guy who was actually released, I believe in 1.0, uh, one of the very first waves. And he's kind of a redo on the armor. And uh, that looks amazing. Looks absolutely amazing. And then this guy also looks amazing. Doesn't look as amazing when you compare them to the other two, but this guy looks really good. This is a great looking figure as well. So you've got these three like just sort of over the top knights, and then you've got an ogre figure in knight's armor. And this guy's crazy. And this is actually what I've kind of seen people sort of ooing and aahing about on, uh, on Twitter when they went to the latest uh, Legions Con. So um, that's the... Uh, majority of the figures there of course are uh, are two horses there's an undead horse right and uh, of course it looks awesome and then they've got a um, you know like a horse for a knight one of these guys you know white horse with like gold armor just want to make sure that we all acknowledge that this is part of the wave uh, there are of course a couple of accessory packs there's some hands there's a weapons pack. Um, you know how it goes. They, uh, they hook us up. Okay, so as far as um, predictions as to resale value, what's going to be the big mover, what's going to go up, the first rule, okay, and this should dictate everything to you guys. You just, people just seem to miss this. It's like it's confusing, but it just comes down to supply and demand. And within supply and demand, Supply is the most important. And the reason why it's the most important is because if you have zero supply, it doesn't matter what the demand is, okay? So, supply is most important. And if you have a large supply of anything, that is, if people pre-order something the most of, that's the one that they're going to um, print up, you know, at the factory. They're gonna make the most of that and sell the most of those, that'll be the biggest supply. And that doesn't mean that they're going to uh, be cheap, but that should tell you that anything that has a very small supply is definitely going to be expensive because there aren't a lot of them out there. So, which are the ones that I think are going to sell the most of? And I think in this run, uh, I think it's gonna be this Necronominus guy. I think he's just, even though he's $60 and Typically on these, I tend to vote on the cheapest, you know, because there's some people out there who just don't have a lot of money, myself included, and they're cheap, myself included, and they just cherry pick the ones they want or they just get like the cheapest one they can find, myself included. I check all those boxes, I'm that guy. So even though these are 60 bucks, right, I still think people are gonna buy the most of these and that includes the horse. So I think within the top three sellers, I'm gonna say either this guy or this guy and the horse, as doesn't matter, Each, it's the same to me. But I think they're gonna sell quite a few of the two packs because when they did the Headless Horseman figure in October, everybody got to see, because a lot of people bought it because it was a, a kind of a one-off weird sort of Halloween thing, everybody got to see how awesome the horses are. And I even made a video called Top 5 Alternatives to Mythic Legion Horses because I knew there would be a lot of people excited about 
fantasy horses for their action figures and that they would want to get some horses for their action figures and they're going to start looking around. And so I think that people are going to, they know that the horses are amazing from uh, the Mythic Legions line and, um, and the undead horse is particularly unusual and cool. You're never going never gonna to see this thing again until like they do some kind of a reissue or a repaint or something like that, right? So I really think the two pack or just the single guy is going to be their top seller on this. I think there's going to be more of those than anything. And if it is, good on them because that is a great looking product. If I have to cherry pick, I'm going to cherry pick that. Okay, second is that um, weird undead blue witch lady with the uh, chimera and the, you know, whatever the, um, the vulture skeleton or I don't know what it is, but something cool like that. Um, even though she's $50, I think she's going to be number two because people love those characters that have a little um, a familiar or a pet with them. They really love the, the G.I. Joe guys, the one who comes with the alligator. Uh, what's his name? Um, his name's something like Scale Skin or something. I don't know. Actually, I just made that up. And then there's the uh, Eagle and Spirit, you know, the Native American cat with his, uh, with his, his eagle. I think that one's great. Um, I have my own sort of spoof of that, of uh, Feed Him and Spit, which is sort of a pirate and a, um, I don't know, kind of a loose parrot. And, uh, and so I think people are really into the sort of the, uh, the, the ranger hunter and his or her pet. And so I think that that's going to be number two. Okay, I think number three on the list is going to be this, uh, this Grim Reaper cat here. I think that this is the guy who everybody is going to... Um, I think everyone's going to identify with regardless of whether or not you collect Mythic Legions or collect fantasy figures. I think anybody can shoehorn this guy into their action figure collection as the Grim Reaper. Plus look at how amazing all the extra stuff is on it. This guy is going to be a hard one for people to, uh, to definitely pass up. I'm going to put that as my number three bestseller. Um, of course, I don't have access to any of the sales. None of the guys from the Four Horsemen communicate with me, nor do they have any intention to, nor would I expect them to. The, the less people know, the better off everyone is, and that's true. That's totally true. So after those, four, uh, those three, what's going to be the next big seller? And I think, right, I think it's going to be this guy. And the reason why I think that is because they have made a lot of these Templar figures now. There's um, a couple of uh, Legion Builder Templar guys. There's a couple of Templar um, heroes out there. Then there's some anti-Templars or some dark Templars or some dark Templar anti-heroes out there. And I think a lot of people who collect those now are gonna see one more and they're gonna want it for the collection. And how could they not want this guy? I feel as if uh, the Four Horsemen should almost go back and redo all their figures and bring them up to at least this good of looking. I mean, look at all those crazy scabbards and the soft goods and the heads and accessories you get with this guy. This is a pretty awesome figure, and um, and it's definitely it's definitely one on my list certainly of uh, of cats I would definitely be buying. So I think that you're going to get that as, uh, as probably in the top five. I'm going to put it at number four, but it's definitely going to be in the top five because I think there's a lot of Templar builders out there who are going to want that. Then as far as the other knights go, this, um, the Sir Gideon guy and uh, Sir Alderic, you know, they both look really fantastic. They both look over the top, and it's just kind of a toss-up. Then there's the, um, the ogre, the ogre guy. Uh, this is the one that I said everybody was kind of talking about on Twitter when they saw him at, at Legion's Con, and it looks pretty cool. I do think that, like, he's a little expensive for, you know, compared to, like, if you're throwing down 37 bucks for one of those other guys, and he's kind of big. It's pretty unique, pretty cool, but I just don't think he's going to sell as well as the others. I'm not saying that, that he's bad. By any means, again, this is an all-in wave. This is like you want to get everything that they have for offer. Yeah, so there's this guy. He'll sell well. This guy will sell well this guy will sell well. They're all going to do really well. Okay, so then there's this guy. 45 bucks. Looks like real bone. This is pretty outrageous, pretty out of control. Really love this figure. Um, I see him as being kind of uh, 
one of the lower sellers compared to the others simply because the other stuff is just so awesome that um, you know with all the different soft goods and the pets and the animals and uh, and the crazy wings and stuff like this not again not that this sucks by any means I just think that this is going to be one of the lower sellers compared to the others I think more people are going to be going on the other figures now I don't know how well their uh, legion building figures do you know their builder packs and I don't know if this builder pack is going to sell as well as the others I think that overall the people who buy those builder packs are their own separate group and I don't think that they're really sort of make up the buying public as much as the others so I think that the, the undead guy is probably going to sell a smaller amount he's in the bottom uh, bottom half of the sales then of course there are these two horses you know there's um, there's the undead one looks amazing certainly and then there's this guy you know it's white with gold and uh, and those are probably going to this is probably gonna be one of the better sales of horses after the headless horseman has come out right uh, compared to the other ones uh, but I don't think they you know I don't think they're gonna sell a lot of them unless they sell the undead horse with its rider that's uh, just an opinion just a prediction a lot of times I'm wrong I'm always wrong never wrong once okay so now if you were somebody who wanted to put their money into buying these simply to resell which things should you buy to make the most money which of these guys should you throw down suggesting that you get and that you don't bring it out in a month it's not a three month thing. You're not six months, not a year later. You put it away and you wait until like, whoosh, there's a, you know, the earth has totally changed and people, you know, now live in caves. And what do we have? We're like, I got one of these in the package. That's what you're gonna have to wait. But of these, the ones that I think that are worth considering for just reselling is anytime you can get into these, um, accessory packs right the hands the feet the weapons and here's why okay take for example like when they came out with with the extra pack of hands for orcs okay if you didn't own an orc figure right you didn't care you saw that and you're like ah, i don't own any orcs why would i buy that right so what that means is that the demand for those hands is particularly low until there's a bunch of people who own orcs and there aren't going to be a lot of orcs available until after they've had several waves, okay? Once you've had like 10 waves of figures and you've got like 11, 12 orcs, then, right, then enough people will have had orcs to where now all of a sudden there's enough people to start looking for these packs. However, they're not coming out now. They came out years ago. Those orc hands, years ago. Those vampire hands, years ago. If you missed them, you missed them right other than secondhand market so that means in the future the demand for hands is going to go up as more people buy figures of specific races okay so if you want to buy something to resell later these that's number one it's going to have the biggest demand in the future and it's going to have because and the smallest demand right now so therefore the smallest supply in the future right it's very 101 and check it out these things are like 14 bucks right for the cost of like you know a horse and a rider you could just get like five six of these you could just like spend a couple hundred bucks and just buy hand packs and just buy the weapon packs right and sit on those and i think that's where the money is i think that is where people are going to do pretty all right now if they were to go evergreen with this and evergreen means something that's always for sale always available so if they always just keep doing a run of these and i talked about evergreen toys and i talked about maybe their um their action figure eagleless that is uh, occasionally available from big bad toy store at random intervals something like that is the kind of figure that you know they every year they can do a run of them and they'll just sell it's just a thing that sells on its own either as a mythic legions figure or as like a crazy weird eagle figure or as some sort of patriotic figure because he's got that 
red, white, and blue, you know, wings, right? So if they go evergreen and they're like, yeah, you know, once every other year, every six months or something, we, we do a run of hands or we do a run of feet. Yeah, okay, well, that would ruin the entire thing, that the spiel that I just had. But if they don't do that, you know, these are your dogs. Uh, these guys are, um, you know, th this is what you're going to uh, kind of make your real money on. Um, and then as far as like the figures go, uh, I really think like the ogre and the the weirdo uh, Tripiculi, Tripiculi, whatever he's called there. I think that that guy. I think those two guys are going to be low numbers of sales compared to the others. I think the other ones are going to be through the roof because they look amazing and people do what I do, which is pick your favorites. And those ones look particularly good. So I see that those guys are probably less favorite than some of the others, and you'll probably get a uh, you'll probably get a bigger return if you're one of those resellers. But I myself, I'm here just to buy the toys, have fun with the toys, play with the toys, um, build teams, uh, customize, uh, shoehorn them into action figure photography whenever possible, um, have them go up against other fantasy figures that kind of thing, find figures that play nice. It's a whole sort of fantasy universe with these guys as an anchor point in the center. Um, I'm a real big fan of the Mythic Legions. I love these guys. I think they just continue to get better and better. In fact, I think that this is probably probably the peak wave in my opinion. I thought the last wave with the Magic users was the peak wave. But when I look at the stuff that they're doing here, um, it's, it's pretty wild. It's pretty amazing that a toy company can, can get to this level of detail, this level of paint, and still mass produce and still put out a product that's that's under 50 bucks i mean i think like some of those um legion builders i think they were like pre-order like 26 dollars and uh, at that price it's like um it's like the marvel legends is starting to finally come up to that price and the marvel legends stuff is it's not that good they're they're kind of the plastic materials kind of shit, and uh they're just generic bucks that have the least amount of painting on it. I mean, like, look at that that Ghost Rider figure that they did. It was just an action figure with a black body and like a and like a Terminator head. It was like that's it. It's just like a little thing of paint. Like, I, could, you know. Anyways, uh, I get upset when I when I see these companies trying to offload what I think is shit for premium prices. And when I see stuff like this, when I see the Four Horsemen putting out premium stuff at low prices it just makes me freak out and say there should be more fans of this stuff and so if you're out there you're an action figure collector you do dioramas you do photography and you're not into fantasy you're not in the mythic legions give these guys a second look and while the pre-order is still open find something from this group to buy and put on the shelf and i guarantee you're going to fall in love with it and you're going to start looking for others. It's really kind of an addicting hobby when you get into these cats. Anyways, that's all for this episode of the Action Figure Toy. I'm glad you guys stuck with me till the end. As always, you can give a like or a dislike. I don't really care. Only YouTube cares. But I really appreciate people who stop by and uh, watch the videos and listen to what I have to say and actually kind of maybe bank on a little bit. So with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one.